goddess, welcome back to the Hello Goddess podcast. I am your host, Mandy Dea de Grace, and today we have a very special guest, one of my good friends, Samira. So let me introduce you to Samira. Samira is a young entrepreneur and influencer with a passion for holistic health and fitness. Founder and CEO of Samira's Corp and Fit Babe Secrets. She is also a crystal executive with global health company Isogenics, leading in her profession. She has a background in clinical psychology with a focus on child development. She is a public speaker, leader, hired mentor, sister and friend to many. So without further ado, let's welcome Samira. Hello everyone, welcome back to my podcast. Today I have a very special guest. She's one of my good friends, Samira. So Samira, uh, can you introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode. I'm so grateful to be here. When Mandy asked me to do this, I was really excited um, because you know, we just bond so well. And I know that um, she provides so much value for me in my life. And I know you as her subscribers are, you know, loyal fans. And I know Mandy provides a lot of value for your life. So I'm really glad because we vibe so much. I'm really excited to do this episode and hopefully we can provide value for you guys today. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. That's very sweet. (laughs) So maybe you could take us back in time and just talk about your story of what brought you where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess my story begins with, um, hmm. well, it started with my post-secondary education. So how I got into that, (laughs) believe it or not, um, this is the early stages of my life. So I was a teenager when a life incident happened to me. And for those of you that don't know me, um, I am actually a victim of domestic violence. So from the young age of 16, I was in an abusive relationship and it was my first boyfriend and I simply just didn't know better. I hid it from my family for a long time until eventually I broke, right? Like many um, people do in those types of relationships. And so when I broke, I ended up pressing charges and... that's kind of what carried me through um, into my post-secondary education. So I took a program called the child and youth care worker program in um, at one of the New Brunswick community college here on the East coast of Canada. And so that was a two year program. And I got in it with the mindset that I wanted to help as many people who were maybe in the same situation as I was, Um, just have a voice and speak up. And so that's really how I uh, got into that field. And then later on, you know, when you're in that program, you're introduced to topics like foundations of sociology and um, intro to psychology. And so I just absolutely fell in love with the science of human behavior. And that's what psychology is. And so I ended up transferring my credits over to Crandall University. And that is where I completed my bachelor's degree in psychology. While I was actually completing my bachelor's degree at uh, Crandall University, in Moncton, New Brunswick. Like most university students do, they pick up jobs, right? And so I had two jobs at the time. I was waitressing and I was actually working at a residential care facility. And in that environment, I was working closely with youth at risk. So think of it as, you know, a very toxic environment. Um, These youth were, that these youth came from bad homes, um, abusive homes. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, homes filled with drugs and strangers coming in and out. And so, of course, it's natural that um, they're going to act out, right? And so they got sent to this facility and I was working closely one-on-one with them. My goal was to become a doctor of psychology and eventually um, move forward with my counseling um, vision, (laughs) my vision for counseling. And so when I was in university, I took a lot of courses like 
um, marriage and family counseling and forensic psychology and abnormal behavior, drugs and behavior, organizational psych, everything, you name it. I took it. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's how I kind of ended up in the corporate world. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us um, and being vulnerable. Um, it's so unfortunate that a lot of women go through domestic abuse, and I'm really sorry that you went through that too. The only good thing that really comes out of that is I'm sure you learned how to love yourself even more, how to respect yourself. And also it really gave you like a path, like you took that experience and you decided to study psychology and look where you are now. It's so beautiful to see your journey. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so from the job right after your psychology degree, um, how did that lead you to where you are now? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, what led me to my position in life now is honestly, uh, while I was working in that environment, it was truly so toxic for the soul. And I found myself burning out. And I remember approaching my boss one day, um, Blake, and I told him, you know, I went to meet him in his office and I, I honestly just broke down. I said, look, like, I can't do this anymore. I am not taking care of myself. I'm not taking care of my health. Like I truly feel like these are some of the darkest days of my life on this earth. And he told me, you know, Samira, it's natural. And the burnout rate in this profession is very high. So he encouraged me to go for a run or, you know, start working out or do something to really um, fill my cup. And so I honestly, um, yeah, I started getting into fitness, but like many um, beginners in fitness, where do you even begin? You know, you, <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> right? You walk into a gym and maybe, you know, you see there's just this lineup of buff dudes and buff girls and you're just like, what? I don't, and you're kind of embarrassed, especially when you're maybe a little overweight. Um, just like coming back to my story, not to, you know, generalize or anything, but this is truly how I felt. I was very intimidated stepping foot into a gym for the first time, you know, really trying to figure out how the machines work and what am I even trying to target? And I found myself gravitating towards the cardio machines. Always. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I find it so interesting because we have a similar journey where uh, I went through a very toxic period in my life. And from that experience, I discovered spirituality, I discovered self love and fitness and health and all these things. And uh, by the way, for um, the listeners, me and Samira were in school together, we were in high school together. And I remember her, her being in one of my classes, and I was like, She's so cool. She's so funny. We reconnected because we're like doing similar things right now uh, yeah. around like wellness and fitness and uh, spirituality and all those things that we have in common. Uh, but yeah, the gym, I, I completely agree with you. Like when I first started working out, I had no idea how to use the machines and I was scared to use them in front of people and they would laugh at me or like I was doing the wrong thing or whatever. <laughs> so it, it's a, definitely a learning process. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I feel like um, everyone that gets started kind of has, has those similar emotions going on inside of them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to answer your question, um, to what led me to where I am now, I found myself enjoying going to the gym. In the beginning, it was hard, but then eventually I found myself enjoying it. And I ended up reaching out to a local coach here um, some of you who know him on the East Coast and know of him, he's a TED Talk speaker. He's really an amazing man. His name is Jason Capson. And I ended up reaching out to him and he came up with a plan for me to, you know, really focus on fitness. And that's kind of what introduced me into the world of fitness. However, um, 
eventually, you know, once you get the hang of it, you kind of start your own journey, right? So I started researching workouts and I started really getting into the fitness world. And that's what really um, unlocked the doors for me. Right. And so once you get into the rhythm of finding what you love and really in the beginning, it truly was self-discipline. You know, I had to force myself to go truly. There was days where I just didn't want to go until eventually you just get so used to the habit of going to the gym and moving your body that you crave it, that you're excited for it. And Mm -hmm. you're like, you know, you're going through your day and you're almost like, oh my gosh, when can I get to go to the gym? I feel the same way. I used to hate going to the gym. My boyfriend, he loves the gym. Like he's always there and it's one of his uh, biggest passions. And he kind of introduced me um, to weightlifting. Um, but now I love weightlifting. Like I love it so much and it feels so good like mentally when you're done and everything. So before we keep going, uh, I wanted to ask you for somebody that's never been to the gym, what is one thing you would say to these people? Oh, oh that's a really good one. Um, <laughs> I guess my advice, um, my little secret would be truly do it for you. Don't, the minute you don't care what anyone else thinks, that's when you truly become free. And I know we're going to talk about self-development later on in the podcast, but Mm -hmm. that truly is um, one of the things that I've grown to learn and know is you live your life for yourself because our time is so valuable. You listen to some of the wealthiest people in the world and the most successful people in the world who have, you know, really lived through life and they're wise and they're into their older ages in life. And the one thing that they wish they could get back is time. And it truly goes to show just how valuable our time on this earth is. And so if you want to achieve something and you really want to just go for it, who cares what anyone thinks and just do it and do it for you. Because honestly, most of the time when you walk into the gym, nobody's even paying attention to you. Mm -hmm. Everyone is in their own little world and they're really just focused on their own workouts. And there's this really amazing quote. I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, (laughs) it, It says, Like, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mandy, if you might have heard of it before, but in your 20s, you care about what other people think. In your 40s, you stop caring about what other people think. In your 60s, you realize no one was even thinking of you at all. (laughs) (laughs) I love that quote. I actually believe that. We're so focused on ourselves and it's natural and we think everyone's judging us or thinking about us or talking about us, but the reality is other people are focused on themselves as well just as much so that's kind of like one of the reasons why I do what I do because some of my friends were like you're so brave making videos making a podcast and stuff like putting yourself out there aren't you scared like of what people think and I'm like I don't really care at all what people think I just want to help someone out there and that's more important than uh, my image and stuff like that (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like servant leadership. I fully believe in that. And it's crazy because just the other day I shared on my Instagram, um, for those of you that don't follow me, you should, it's Samira secrets on Instagram. So mm-hmm. hit me up there. But, um, <laughs> I just shared, a uh, one of my recent posts, the caption was how to avoid criticism, say nothing, do nothing, be, be nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be nothing. So that's right. Exactly. And it doesn't matter what you say or what you do or what you put out there. There will always be someone that criticizes. So yeah, just learn. I think that's a sign that you're successful. If some people start to criticize you, uh, you're definitely on a new level. (laughs) Yeah. From the, your, your passion for the gym and working out, uh, how did that expand to the other areas of your life where you love um, wellness and health? 
Yeah. So um, with my uh, dive into fitness, I quickly learned how important it is to supplement your nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so truly nutrition is the key and that really the basis and the foundation for uh, an optimal healthy life. And so I was introduced to an incredible company called Isogenics. It's a global health and wellness company. And with the introduction to this incredible health and wellness company, it's a global company, right? And, you know, when I was introduced to it, you get to meet these incredible people from all over the world, all different walks of life. And when you're presented with the science behind these products, um, I, you really come to understand just how important it is what we consume in our bodies because what we consume eventually translates into our being and that can be from mental clarity energy vitality and well-being um, focus and all of those things translate into our everyday lives with our ro romantic relationships, our friendships, our family. And when you truly are the healthiest version of yourself, um, that's when you're living a full life. Because I find, you know, when I was unhealthy and toxic and I wasn't taking care of myself, I was short tempered. I you know, wasn't able to really focus well. I kept losing my train of thought. Um, and I truly didn't feel alive, if that makes any sense. But when you realize how important it is to cleanse your body from toxins and replenish it with nutrients, it's insane how much it's almost like a light switch turns on inside you. And you realize, wow, I didn't even realize my body was designed to feel this good. Like, think yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I know this channel is a little bit about spirituality. And when you really think about it, our bodies are so divinely created that we were meant to live a happy, healthy, vibrant, full, expressive life. And, you know, with today's society, um, there's so many um, toxicity out there, you know, with products and foods and whatnot. So, yeah, definitely. I like as a Reiki practitioner, I really believe that health should be looked at from a holistic lens and connecting the mind, the body and the soul. Um, your body's so, 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 so important and is very uh, um, dependent and has like a symbiotic relationship with the rest of yourselves. So for me, like another thing I, I resonate with you again is I care about what I, I put in my body and on my body and in my environment. So mm. I try to avoid toxic products as much as possible. Um, obviously, like it's impossible to avoid every single toxin in the world, but I think that helps us live a more fulfilling and healthy and vibrant life, like you were saying. So that makes yeah. A lot of sense. Yeah. So you were talking a little bit about spirituality. Uh, what opened you up to the world of spirituality? Yeah. So I really think just to backtrack, um, I was first introduced to network marketing when I was 18 years old. And, um, you know, at the time I was 18, right? I didn't know any better. I didn't have any post-secondary education. Um, I was from a small town um, in on the East Coast of Canada and I caught the vision early on, but you know, I, it, you, it was a company called Body by Vi. I don't know if any of you listeners out there have ever heard of Vistalis, but that was my first introduction to the network marketing profession. And you know, it was it wasn't until later on in my life that I was introduced to Isogenics, and my self development journey really began when I saw Tony Robbins live in Las Vegas. Oh I would love to do that. Yeah, it was amazing. So the company actually brought him in to speak to the crowd and it was life changing. I remember I was crying and it was so cool. <laughs> he, he really got the crowd to do interactive things. And I just remember going there you know, and it's Las Vegas and you're having fun and you're going out. But when I saw him live, it shook my world. And that's when, really? 
I began to change. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty, pretty remarkable. Because he does have a very spiritual uh, perspective, like for your mindset, like you attract what you are. And I mean, I love him. He's incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I'm sure that that moment was a pivotal moment for you um, to see Tony Robbins. Uh, do you think that afterwards re- you really started to open up more spiritually? Yeah, absolutely. I really found myself diving into uh, audible books and researching Tony himself even more, even reading hard copy books. Um, I just really dived into the world of self-development. And I truly believe the more you grow yourself, the more your life expands in all aspects, whether it's yeah, whether it's financially or romantically, or, you know, you build more meaningful relationships in your life with your friends and your family members, and you just become a better person, honestly. I love that you use that term pivotal moment because it really was a pivotal moment in my life. So, um, What's different about me is I grew up on the east coast of Canada in small town, rural New Brunswick. And already I feel like I am a stranger in a strange place because I'm actually born in Ontario, as is the rest of my sisters and my mom. And my dad actually comes from Tunisia. It's on the tip of northern Africa. So it's just off the coast of the Mediterranean. And you know, being biracial here in Canada um, and, you know, completely uprooted from our home in Ontario to, you know, essentially relocate. Um, mm-hmm. It was in grade two. So mm-hmm. I, I did grow up around here, but I, you know, my family's different. We have different traditions that we honor mm-hmm. um, to respect my dad and our heritage and the culture, um, which happens to be Arabic. And my dad grew up Muslim. My mom grew up Christian. So I grew up in a very neutral home. Um, we didn't really discuss faith, but as we got older, my parents both believe in God, um, even though one of them calls God Allah and the other one calls God, you know, God, right? Um, It was very much the same premise around the topic, but because the house was so neutral, they just wanted us to grow up um, kind of like a clean slate so we could make our own decisions. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, Crandall is actually a private Christian university. So, um, you know, I chose to go there simply because I studied in French my entire life, but Crandall was the closest university where I could, um, you know, save more money and study in English. I just didn't want to study in French anymore. And so I found myself truly, um, like opening my eyes to faith when I was, when I was in university, whereas my self-development journey really kickstarted after Tony Robbins. But I do believe that self-development and faith, which are two very important um, parts of my life, kind of commingle. They do, and yeah. While I was studying at Crandall, we would study different sections of the Bible. And um, interestingly enough, our some of our professors were very neutral. You you know, we had um, students that weren't Christian in the school, students that were hardcore Christian in the school and students that were um, just, you know, there was just a different array of students and uh, Mm -hmm. beliefs. And I think how faith and um, spirituality and self-development come together is when you allow them to just mold into one another because, um, you know, I'll tell you guys a story. So I was in one of my classes. It was one of my religious study classes in university. And there's about a hundred students in the class. And we were actually reviewing Genesis. And for those of you that don't know, like Tony Robbins is a uh, man of faith himself. And so like many very successful people, they, um, you know, believe in God. And so we were studying the first book of the Bible. And the first book of the Bible is Genesis. And so in the, in the story of Adam and Eve, you know, Eve goes to eat a fruit from the tree of life. 
And this, the snake as depicted in the Bible is telling her, just eat it. It's juicy. It's juicy. That's the temptation, right? But um, how the professor got us to look at it, you know, he was like, okay, who here um, resonates with this story? Or what do you guys think? And one student raised their hand and said, well, obviously talking snakes don't exist. So I don't believe it. It's not a true story, right? And then another student raised his hand and he said, you know, I think it's more of like that inner voice where we're all yeah. made up of good and evil and light and dark and the yin and the yang. And rather than looking at it so, um, what's the word? So blatantly or figuratively, um, he stressed the importance to look at it through the eyes of poetry. I don't know if any of you are avid poets or um, poetry readers, but you know, sometimes when it's a riddle or a sonnet or it's a poem, it's not necessarily exactly what the meaning is, but it's just mm -hmm. the underlying meaning. And kind so, of like a metaphor for something else, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I guess to really reframe my story, my, my eyes to faith started opening up when I was in university, but my self-development really kicked off with Tony mm -hmm. and Makes the sense. two together, ever since I saw him in Las Vegas, I was just obsessed with the idea of growing. So mm -hmm. I started reading books, listening to podcasts, reading audibles, hard copy books, and I just became obsessed with self-development. And I find the more you grow as a person, the more goodness you attract into your life. And so you know, I'm proud to say that throughout my life, I have attracted really incredible people. I have an amazing group of friends. Um, my relationships with my family members are better than ever. And, you know, I have been, a I have been fortunate enough to be introduced to some very successful people, um, millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires, and you know, featured in Forbes magazine, Fortune 500. And I truly believe that the more you expand your thought process, your beliefs, and the more open you are to receiving all different kinds of energy. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And of course, when you're around those types of people, um, they have an influence on you. And so that's kind mm -hmm. of what um, really kicked off my journey into entrepreneurship and my um, network marketing career. Mm -hmm. I can really relate to that. I feel like, you know, the saying they say that um, you become like the five people you hang out the most with. Mm -hmm. um, like for me, um, when my personal development journey started, I noticed that a lot of my um, life changed. Things started to shift. Um, I lost some friends. I made some new friends because I feel like we attract who we are. That's probably one of the reasons why we started to connect me and you again, uh, because we're both really passionate about growth and we're both entrepreneurs. Um, that being said, uh, can you explain to us a little bit about your business? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can go on and on about it because I'm so passionate. So um, I have two businesses right now. My first business is my network marketing business. So I have a large organization. Um, we're in several different countries. I'm blessed to say that I am a crystal executive with the company called Isogenics. And I think um, what really kicked it off for me was when I was introduced to um, network marketing at the age of 18, I had the vision, but clearly God had a different plan. And I had to kind of go through my post-secondary education, go through, go through some things and whatnot. Um, but network marketing is such an amazing thing because you don't have to um, source products. You don't have to um, come up with, you know, essentially logo design or even invent a product or hold the product, manufacture the product, ship the product. You don't have to worry about any of that when it comes to network marketing. That's really what the company is for. Essentially, you're just leveraging um, your time 
for more money by working alongside with other like-minded people. And so it really is such an incredible business. And what's cool is the door for this business is honestly $30 and it gives you access to the potential of a multi-million dollar company. Now, of course, um, as an associate, I have to tell you guys that, um, these earnings aren't typical or average, but whoever is willing to put in the effort and the work, the sky is the limit because there are tons of people across the world from, you know, retired carpenters to eyelash technicians, stay at home moms, school teachers, you name it. Um, and they have reached incredible heights with this company. And it's really, really cool because you feel like you're a part of a community um, of just people who want the same things. And like you said, your community is so important. Um, you know, when you want to up level in life, your entourage, I guess, has to up level with you, right? So right. that's really amazing. I love it because you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Um, and, you know, really it's, it's called like the laptop lifestyle. You can truly, it's a mobile business. It's not like a brick and mortar business. You can truly work from anywhere, um, whenever you want, wherever you want. And that's what I love about this business so much. And the entry is so easy. You don't need a post-secondary education. Um, you don't even need a big startup cost, nothing. Entry is so easy and it's for um, so we have a saying in our company, and this might go across many different companies, but it's not for everybody, but it's for anybody. Mm. And that's because, you know, it is available to so many people, but not many people will go that extra mile to really work something because it is work. It's not just like net dabble, net try it for one night, net mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of effort, right? It's net work marketing. And so right. with that being said, um, yeah, to build a large organization, it takes work. And anyone listening sure. to this who might be connected with a another company, um, whatever your product service or opportunity is, um, you know, if you're a leader in your company, you know that it takes hard work to build your organization. So um, I love that aspect of it. It sounds really incredible that you can work from your laptop anywhere in the world and you can join for $30. That's amazing. Um, I hope that people out there who are interested will try to contact you. I'll leave all of your um, information, your contact. So maybe talk to us about the other business you have. Yeah, absolutely. So my other business, um, honestly, it's been a passion project of mine for, oh my goodness. I think I came up with the idea almost two years ago. Um, you created this business, right? I did. Yeah. From scratch. It really is a startup. Um, so, you know, my passion for health and fitness you know, really drove me to honestly require high quality products. So I found myself using high quality nutrition, but when you really get into the world of health and fitness and you go to the gym as much as I do, and you work out as much as I do, when you begin to use, um, you know, fitness accessories and things like that, you start to notice some of the faults with some of the products that you're using. And I would always say things like, oh, I wish um, maybe this barbell pad was fluffier, or I wish um, this ankle strap was more sturdy and I had just a better quality one. And I really wanted to, you know, um, kind of expand on my, um, my vision of how I can help so many people because I've transformed my body. So many women have approached me and said like, oh my gosh, like, how do I get fit like you? I want a butt like you. I want a butt like you. <laughs> right. So I love that. yeah. And I know what it feels like to struggle in your skin and mm -hmm like you know a little overweight and toxic and you don't want to put it on a bikini you don't want to go out you don't want to go boating or see anyone and so I really wanted to kind of put my spin on how um, I just really turned my passion for fitness into um, a business and so beautiful I love that thank you so much is it for women only or men as well 
right now it's very female focused. Um, and it's only because my market, you know, I know what it's like to be in a female body and exactly. kind of work towards um, my goals and how I can help other women achieve the same. Mind you, if a guy asked me for a fitness plan, I could totally help him out. But um, yeah, it's really female focused at the moment. And what's cool is it just so happens to be our pre-launch day today that we're filming this episode for this podcast. So that's kind of fortuitous. I know. I, I feel like that's not an accident. It was meant to happen today because <laughs> we had set up a, a day to record and it didn't work out last time. But yeah, today was perfect for sure. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is so true. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I love that. There yeah. are no accidents, right? For sure, for sure. So I have a question for you. So we were talking about toxicity throughout this episode uh, in different shapes and forms of toxicity. Um, so if you if there's a, a listener out there that is going through a similar experience where it could be uh, domestic violence, it can be toxic environment, toxic food, toxic relationship with yourself, what is the number one advice you would give to that person? Hmm. I think my, um, my secret would be to really focus on yourself. Um, this is what I would say. So I would actually recommend that you get out a pen and a paper. And the reason being because when you write it down, it's physical, you're putting it out in the universe and there's a connection that happens subconsciously when your hand is physically writing it out and you're thinking of it at the same time as you're writing it. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is it doesn't matter who your husband is who your boyfriend is, who your girlfriend is, who your friends are, what your family thinks, Mm -hmm. what do you want? Like, don't ask yourself, how do I get there? You know, what if, what if this happens or don't, cause that's your mind that starts to, the fear starts to kick in Mm -hmm. and the fear is the dark side. So ask yourself, you know, what do I really want? I love that. That's really good advice. Yeah. And it could be, you know, oh, I've always dreamed about going on a date with this person, or I've always dreamed of making a million dollars, or I've always dreamed of starting my own business or becoming a leader or traveling to Egypt, whatever the case it may be, write down what it is you want exactly. And be super, super specific. Mm-hmm. Don't even say like, how am I going to get there? Or, Oh, this person's already in a relationship or I can't go to Egypt because COVID-19 don't ask how, just what, like, what do you want? And, um, you know, maybe if in, you're in a toxic relationship right now, it doesn't matter like what's going on. Just ask yourself, what do you want? And I know you guys are probably like, Samira, we get it. We're blue in the face. <laughs> when, you, when you focus in on what you really want, I'm telling you the universe will give it to you. Mm-hmm. And if you are struggling right now, if you want a better body, what do you want? Write it down. If you want a better relationship, what do you want? Mm-hmm. And realize, you know, you can't control others. Never but you can always control yourself. You can always control your actions. You can control your thinking. That's your power. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's a beautiful answer. Thank you so much. I'm so happy we had this conversation. Uh, Learn a lot from you every time we hang out and uh, you have so much wisdom to share and your story is inspiring. Thank you so much. Uh, Well, I have one last question for you. And I asked this to every one of my guests. Um, so what is your definition of a goddess? Ooh, I like that. (laughs) Hmm. My definition for a goddess. It's funny because, um, I have a fitness plan called the goddess fit plan. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) My definition for a goddess would have to be, she is so powerful in her own right that she leverages her strengths. I truly believe that all of us on this earth offer something different and unique. And um, once we tap into our chi, I guess you could say, is when 
the goddess within us really comes out. And what that could mean is, you know, we are all made for greatness. It's just a matter of, do we believe in enough in ourselves? And Mm -hmm. the goddess in my eyes exudes confidence, exudes strength, courage. And just for you listeners listening in, there is no courage without fear. And even though um, she might be a goddess and she's beautiful in her own way and she's confident and she's open-minded to learning new things and open-minded to growing and whatnot, it doesn't mean that she's not faced with fear. It means that she faces fear full force. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think a goddess, someone who is, you know, takes care of herself and, um, you know, because when you take care of your temple, of course, you're going to exude beauty and radiate. And when you love yourself enough and you're confident and you're bright and you're energized, I truly believe that that is when that is a goddess, someone who is just well-rounded in terms of, you know, tapping into her power, open to growth, um, takes care of herself physically, mentally, and allows people and welcomes people into her circle. Because being godly to me means you love all beings. Even if, yeah, even if someone's done you wrong or um, you've been hurt by someone in the past, you still love them and forgive them and welcome them with love. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying the goddess tolerates disrespect, betrayal, um, anything like that, but she forgives them and she is so powerful. She understands just how important it is and sacred it is to protect her energy that Mm -hmm. she won't allow that negativity or someone who's hurt her in her, in her, um, presence, but she still loves that person. And that's what I think is the definition of being godly, being a goddess and just like owning your shit, basically. (laughs) (laughs) That was a very, very good answer. Thank you so much, Amira. Um, yeah, I definitely see you as a goddess for sure. (laughs) Oh, thank you. You too, Mandy. Thank you. I feel like we've been through a lot and we've learned through um, our experiences and the the books we've read. You, like you were saying, the podcast, everything that we um, are passionate about helps us to grow. And if Samira has done it and if Mandy has done it, you guys out there, you can believe in yourself and you can do it too. You can let go of all that toxic energy in your life and start a journey of self-love. So for the people out there who are interested in your business or getting to know you, uh, where would they be able to find you? Yeah, absolutely. So if you are looking for me personally, you can follow my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Samira Secrets. And my YouTube channel is Samira's apostrophe S Secrets. And um, if you're looking for all things Fit Babes, um, head over to Fit Babe Secrets on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well. And you can also um, access any of our products on Amazon and on fitbabesecrets.com. So I urge you to go check it out if you want premium quality fitness accessories. And if you're looking for nutrition, one-on-one coaching, and um personalized meal plans, you can always head over to fitbabesecrets.isogenics.com as well to get started on your health journey today. Thank you so much, Samir. I'm happy that you got a chance to share your beautiful businesses. And I know it's going to help a lot of people out there. And I just can't wait to have you again on a different episode. (laughs) We've been talking for a while. It's a very good episode so far. Thank you so much. I've, I've, I'm so grateful to be here today. I'm I'm thankful that you asked me to do this with you. You're such a positive light and I'm so glad that. (laughs) Thank you so much for taking the time to be my guest on the podcast. All right. So that's about it for tonight. Thank you so much for listening and uh, we're sending you all of the love. Thank you. Bye everyone. So that concludes our episode for today. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something from Samira. And I definitely do. Every time we hang out, I learn something new because she has so much knowledge and wisdom to share. That being said, I will see you next week. Sending you all of the love, all of the light, the Reiki energy. 
Bye.